Brother Bobby here with the Off Grid Church. Welcome back for another video, guys. Uh, got my dog Nala with me here. Figured it would be the right time to introduce you all to her as we're talking about post-apocalyptic setups and uh, post-apocalyptic weapon systems. And I figured that's probably the best weapon you can have in a post-apocalyptic situation is an apocalyptic dog. Okay, enough of the apocalyptic words. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to dive down into... Uh, my chest rig briefly and the contents that I have in my pack, but also why I chose the 22 LR combined with a 10 millimeter. Um, you know, as long as we live in a fallen world and until Jesus Christ himself returns and destroys the enemy himself and builds the new heaven and new earth, there's always going to be a form of some threat or another here. Um, but in a post apocalyptic environment, when the chaos has settled down, what weapon system do you prefer? As for me, I do prefer the 22 long rifle in that scenario, in that specific scenario, and especially paired with a 10 millimeter. And here I have a Glock 29. And when you combine these two, it really makes for a deadly combination and a true survival, a survivor men's loadout. Uh, the 22 long rifle uh, speaks for itself. Um, a lot of people give it, you know, have their, they have, a lot of people have their own opinion on it, but I, I, I love the 22 LR. Uh, and, it's, and if your training is up to par, you can actually do a lot of damage with the 22 LR. In fact, the 22 long rifle cartridge actually takes more lives in America than any other round out there. I don't know if you guys knew that. You can Google it, though. Fact check me in the comments. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's my weapon so loadout system is a 22 LR combined with a 10 millimeter for a post-apocalyptic scenario, seeing as, you know, people have burnt through their resources, their ammo, you know, their, their, their food, their water. When things have died down, lots of threats have been neutralized, and here you are, you have somehow survived World War III, a uh, nuclear attack, an invading foreign army, pestilence, whatever it is, uh, and you're out here alone in the wilderness, what weapon system and gear would you have? And we're going to talk about a few items that I have. Again, this is for training purposes. I'm out here just training, so, you know, items like this, you know, Garmin and Reach Mini are are probably not going to make a lot of sense in an you know in an end of the end of the end time situation because uh, nobody's coming to save you, right? Um, but uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into 
um, my gear. All right, since we're right here, we might as well discuss the chest rig that I put together a few days ago really briefly. Um, this is a Spirit of Systems Mark V chest rig placard that you can shove on plate carriers and or wear as a standalone chest rig, which is what I have here. Uh, I like it, very compact and uh, very mobile, very streamlined, and I love that. Um, and I have three, right up at the top here, three 25 round, 22 long rifle Ruger magazines, which are really reliable. They feed great, seeing as 22 long rifle tends to have feeding issues, being as a it is a, um, a rimfire cartridge. These magazines are very great. So I love these magazines. And um, the inserts that I'm using are the Haley Pistol Elastic Magazine inserts, which, which aren't the best for re-indexing. Um, but with trial and error and practice, you can kind of, you know, get them in there somewhat fast. But they're not the best. They're kind of actually hard to get in there. They're not really made for it. Um, and on the right here, I have a monocular Vortex Solo RT is what this one is. This is an A power. I like it because it has the rangefinder kind of etched into it. So you can kind of gauge how far your target is or your enemy is with that, which I really love. I think that's a great feature for it. Um, in an environment like this, maybe having some full compact, full powered binoculars, excuse me, would be better uh, in this environment where things are very wide open. Um, I have a great signaling device here. Uh, this is a chem light with some 550 cord attached to it. And that way, if you do have to press the search and rescue button while you're out here in a training environment, something something goes bad, um, and the search and rescue can get you, and it's nighttime, you can crack this open and kind of lasso it like that. And those guys with night vision can see you a little better. At least that's the idea of it. Uh, I got an admin pouch up here. I'm not, not an admin pouch, an admin light up here. This is a Surefire helmet light. You guys have seen this on my plate carrier. I talked, took this off of there and put it on here for testing and, and, and to see if, you know, because I always, when I come out here, I do like to test uh, land nav and I do it at nighttime sometimes. I was messing around with it last night, actually, with my maps back here. Um, so, you know, you got your whole shebang map stuff, reverse hazmat crap that I, annoys me. But we live in modern day Babylon with modern day luxuries and I wouldn't call it GPSs like this. A blessing so fast because I think that land nav and using you know the natural GPS way of our brains is is probably a preferred method, um, and we should try to stay sharp on that. But I'm totally lost, so I'm trying to relearn all of those things. But in the nighttime, it is helpful to have a light here, so you can you know it kind of uh, rotates like that, so you can you know be hands free, or either that or you got to wear a headlamp. So. Uh, Back here, I have a little admin pouch with my map is, and some right in the rain and the right in the rain pen. And in front of that, I have a um, up armored knife. This is a great knife. These are kind of a little bit on the pricey side. This is their fight for survival knife. Up armored knives are made in Tennessee, I believe. Um, sorry for all the commotion today. I don't know why there's, there's airplanes going off. I got friends in the background shooting. So I hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, but yeah, I have a knife back here, which is on the uh, Ferro Concepts knife nook. And that just kind of Velcros it to the back and keeps the knife in place because it moves around. You can jimmy rig in other ways. I've done that before by, with zip tying and stuff, but it is kind of nice to have like a permanent solution. And they're, they're fairly cheap, the knife nooks from Ferro Concepts. So I have that on there. Uh, my harness, I don't think I've talked about my harness. I pulled this off of my Mayflower just to get out here and train. These are my favorite harnesses from Mayflower. Uh, they're the most comfortable and they, they, they fit the, the best when it comes to packs, especially sustainment packs like this. The way they're, they're nice and thin and just the overall H harness design of it just fits the best. Um, all, my friends uh, say the same thing as well about the, the Mayflower harness. So I, I ended up ripping it off of that one and putting it on here for training. As well as the dangler on the bottom, I pulled it. This is a Mayflower dangler as well. And I pulled it off on my other rig and put on this one and re re-kitted it. Here I have a full IFAC inside of here. And then on the front pocket, I have a water filter, um, a fire starter. This is just a, a little container which has, you know, some tinder and um, uh, what do you call it? The striker things to, to create spark. I, I can't think of it right now. I have one of those in here. Um, and then as well as a Bible. This was actually given to me while I was in the army a long time ago. And uh, 
It's just the New Testament, Psalms and Proverbs. So nice and compact. You always have the Word of God on you at all times. But as always, the Word of God is in your heart. It should be at least. Uh, some bear spray. <clears throat> just in case I don't have to shoot a bear while I'm out here training or even in a real world post-apocalyptic scenario, if I don't have to shoot a bear or a human being and I can just spray them and, and get out of the situation, I'd much prefer to do that. Um, but I do have it here in bungee cord on here to the bottom of the Mark V chest rig. And that just gives me more peace of mind as another option. Uh, Garmin in Reach Mini 2. This doesn't make a lot of sense for, you know, post true post-apocalyptic environment, as seeing as the world is falling apart and nobody's coming to save you. But in a training environment, it makes a lot of sense. Plus, I can send text messages to my wife if I'm out here longer than usual. Sometimes I'll say, how am I only going to go pull an old not, uh, a one-nighter? And then I'll end up spending three nights out here. So if I don't have GPS signal, uh, I can send a text message with my coordinates, uh, make sure my family knows I'm okay as well as works as a GPS and has an SOS button on here as well. Uh, high-vis tourniquet, again, in a post-apocalyptic scenario, doesn't make a lot of sense having a high-vis tourniquet, maybe something that blends in a little bit better, but I have it out here for training purposes. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for the chest rig. I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Uh, that's it for the chest rig. So we'll dive into a few of the components in my pack. This is my pack system. My camera won't tilt any lower. Hopefully, hopefully this view is okay for you guys. Um, I really love this pack design from 511. This is the 511 Rush 100 pack. Um, I really love this design. Not really a fan of the quality. Uh, it's not made in America, these 511 packs. So I don't know how long it's going to hold up. But I really do love the, the design of the pack. Um, on the side here, and we'll talk about the design actually. It's a 60 liter, liter pack, which I think is the perfect, you know, size um, and i do love the way it's like more or less tall and narrow instead of wide and short like dallas packs um, i do like the taller narrow um, you know designs better um, but you guys can see here there's a nice slot for my axe here that i can pull out uh, that is my the off grid church axe by uh, hardcore hammers with uh, matthew 24 13 he that shall endure until the end shall be saved I don't know if you guys can see that but that's my survival axe just in case i do have to build some shelters out here um you know from from scratch um and uh so i like that it has a little sleeve there for my axe as well as i have some elk skin uh winter gloves um it's, it's still a little cold out here right now and i just have those carabiner on right there and i have a little compression strap that i can cinch those down to and on this pack, on this pocket right here, I just keep my jet boil. <clears throat> um, I can swap this in and out with other stuff, but my jet boil, spoon, and there's my whole cook system right in there. Um, and, and in the front here, this pocket kind of changes. You know, when I'm out here training, I'll, I'll usually shove my drone in here uh, in a watertight bag um, with, with extra batteries for the drone. Um, but other, other, other times I'll just have a uh, boonie or a balaclava or anything and everything in there an extra rain jacket beanie food i'll put in there all sorts of stuff it's actually a pretty wide pocket six by nine inches this is a, a 511 pocket as well that, you, that molly's on here uh, i have carabiners right here which we'll talk about in a little in a little bit why i love this cool idea that i can't wait to show you about but uh down here is a sleeping bag compartment so it's got its own compartment separate from the main compartment you can put your sleeping bag in, which is what I like. I do like that it's separate. <clears throat> um, right now I have a pretty big zero degree uh, sleeping winter winter sleeping bag in here, which takes up a lot of space. And this is primarily like my winter cooler month setup. For summer months, I, my, my pack is a lot smaller, and we'll discuss that in, in another video when the warmer months come. But, you know, external sleeping bag compartment pocket. On the bottom here is my shelter system um this is the light fighter um the light fighter one-man tent with the tough sack everything fits in there very durable and i have it molly down to the bottom so it doesn't take up room inside the pack although it does fit inside the pack as well um but if you want to shove extra layers and clothing or food for longer trips having the pack on the outside makes the most sense you can 
you know, get the best of your space and maximize your space. So um, that's my shelter system. And on this side, obviously, I have my rifle cinched down, um, and I have it on one of these, you know, an extra GP sustainment pouch on the bottom with extra 100 rounds of ammo in here. Um, and it works well. And if I'm not running a rifle, I'm just here hiking and rolling around with my Glock 29. I'll have other stuff in here that you can you can shove in here, which these pockets again are six by nine. These are vertical pouches though. Uh name tag, American flag right there. But that's what I use to cinch my rifle down. That way I don't I can be hands-free. I don't have to have the rifle slung around me, around my shoulders, create more hot spots. The rifle just sits there. Um and uh speaking of the rifle, the Ruger 1022, I just put this stock on it. I have the, the exact same stock on my other. I have two of these, by the way. Two of these. 1022 takedown rifles i love them um but i forgot i guess they didn't come with the, the sling grommet so i don't have a sling on here right now to go buy the insert so you can put the qd on there it's so dumb i don't know why magpul does that but uh yeah magpul x22 backpacker stock uh 15 round mag uh, i have the, obviously the 25 the bigger ones but um simple red dot and uh you know i, I painted this fde a while ago and then i just put it on the stock but that's my rifle um in the inside we won't break this down too much for the sake of time but we'll talk about this top compartment here because um i have this bag this is a mesh bag and what i do with this is i will see these two loops on here if you guys can see those got yeah, two loops and i hook those up to the carabiners on the side and you can air dry your socks or if anything got wet you know a towel that you used to wash off in the river or whatever you have under the needs to be air dried you can hike and that way this can be air drying as you're hiking to the new location um which is a game changer for me instead of shoving socks inside of your you know belt line and having them dry out that way uh, this is more secure it's in a mesh bag it's not going anywhere in this caribbean around here and the sunlight directly hits it and beams on it so I, I have that on the top pocket just so i can air dry laundry and then um an extra beanie this is 100 percent wool and um this is an awesome pouch here love this pouch uh this is by Equinox. It's made in the USA. It's very lightweight. This actually bounces around from pack to pack. It's so good. I actually need to build another one of these. But um, it's very lightweight. It's not overbuilt and too heavy. But inside of here, I have everything from hygiene, small toothbrush, floss, tent repair kit, a bag repair kit, small towel with some shampoo. Uh, the shampoo that doesn't need any uh, uh, water rinse-free shampoo. A whole foot repair kit um poison ivy wipes just in case you rub on some poison ivy um you know let's just open it up and see what else i got in here it's been a while since i've been in here um cold shower packets just in case you don't have a river or you're, you ran out of baby wipes there's some extra ones in there um but a full med kit full foot repair kit with cream foot repair cream foot cream i mean um blister repair all that stuff in here and then outside it has two, another external pocket here, which I keep baby wipes and uh, have a tick remover. Uh, these are these just work amazing. If you ever get bit by a tick, you just pop them right out. So that way you don't risk breaking the head. As well as uh, a sunscreen stick. Um, that's important, especially in the summer months when you're out here in the middle of the desert or anywhere. And then these are the poison ivy. Uh, poison oak wipes that you can use in case you do run across poison ivy and then as i have bug spray as well um so all of that in here so that's a full kit and has everything you need and it's just really small and lightweight and just fits up in just this little small package and this will bounce around me from pack to pack but i need to build another one of these so it can just stay where it, it is um, and that's in the top compartment as well as i'll have a headlamp in there um and uh here's another cool little front 
admin pouch or pocket that they have on this on this rough from 511 folds all the way down and here i just have an extra chem light i was actually using this for my for nala um her dog harness um you know at nighttime i can barely see her so i'll crack a chem light and shove it in her her dog harness which has molly so that way i can spot her from far away um here is filter adapters for my water bladder i have a three liter water bladder on this rig as well so i can hook up my sawyer water filter and drink straight from my water bladder um and i have a uh a silky gomboy saw again this is for building those shelters I haven't actually done that in a while. I need to just build a shelter from scratch, A-frames and, and all kind of permanent long-term shelters you can build um, with a saw like this and an ax and a knife. You can get a lot of work done. Um, so I do have that as well. Uh, fire starting kit, a little rubber band my buddy gave me that says pray for the persecuted church on here, but it's just a fire, fire starting kit on here. Um, you know, a, a much larger one than I had in my, in my, uh, dangler on my chest rig. Um, water tablet. These are the potable water decon tablets as well. And then there's another zippered, whoops, there's another zippered pocket back here. Canteen cover for my canteen on my belt of the pack, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And because I'm an idiot, I have this learning knots stuff because I forget knots and I'm not the best at knots. So I like to carry this and come out here and practice knots, especially when it comes to setting up tarps. I love tarp shelters. Um, only thing I don't like about tarp shelters is that there's no bug netting and in the middle of the summer it sucks. So, um, but in this type of weather with spring, there's not so many bugs. Tarps are amazing. So I like to carry around this knot. There's the little placard of notes of how to tie knots and all the different knots you have. Um, and I just got this as well. This is a survival snare kit. I think these are actually highly illegal to sneer in the middle of nowhere or on BLM land or wherever you're at. I don't plan on actually doing it. I do it like to come out here and actually work on sneering and setting up and, and mastering a technique because this is great in a survival situation to come out here and cry. But I, I just got this. See, it's still open. Haven't even used it yet, but it's in here just in case. Um, I actually do want to test that out, which will be very uh, shortly if you guys want to see that leave a link in the com or a comment if you guys really, really want to see me do that um and uh what else in there i have some some bank line i like bank line more than 550 cord in some situations 550 cord is still you know probably top dog but i prefer bank line it's a little easier to work with and that's all that's in there um i thought i had some trip wire in here too oh yeah actually here it is i have some trip wire in this pocket i forgot to talk about Way at the, oh no wait it is in here sorry yeah some trip wire uh for security purposes you can use that for, for snaring animals too and setting up traps all sorts of uses for trip wire um that i need to actually get out here and, and build skill upon as well so i don't know everything man i'm trying to learn just like just like any anybody else but that is the side admin pouch you could also shove ar magazines in here they will fit 556 ar magazines i've done that as well when i run my bcm so you can get creative and run all sorts of different stuff depending on what type of equator, what type of uh, gear or equipment you guys have. Um, and then in the main compartment, it's just your typical sleeping bag, um, which I showed you here. My, I'm not even going to actually break it down. Uh, my sleeping mattress, which is a thermal rest, the 6.8 R value one, the winter one which is very comfortable and warm, as well as I have a Helinox Zero chair in here, my tent poles, uh, and uh, extra food uh, for three, four days, depending on how long I'm gonna be out here, and then extra layering. That's it, that's all that's in the main compartment. Um, we'll go around to the back here. So this belt system is probably my favorite part of the pack. Um, it's got a Molly belt line, and here I have rigged, we'll just go over the items real quick, a little pouch here which i have a gerber multi-tool um a glock 29 10 millimeter outside the waistband holster which i just have zip tied i don't know if you guys can see those zip ties i have to get a better mounting system for it but the zip ties definitely work and behind here i have some trauma shears and then a tourniquet with a tourniquet pouch uh this is just a training tourniquet a lot of people think this is a knockoff china one but this is a uh, 
who have been with me since 2011. Check this out. So 2011. I actually deployed with this tourniquet. Never used it. So for me, it's a good luck tourniquet. And I use, use it now for training. So, you know, to keep myself familiar with the motions of wrapping a tourniquet around myself, I use this one for training. That way I don't have to use my actual tourniquets to save those. Um, and then on this side of the belt, um, I just have my canteen with a canteen carrier, my canteen cup as well fits in there, and it's snug. It doesn't go anywhere. I have gloves, extra gloves, shooting gloves, or just a, a thinner pair of gloves, uh, carabinered on here. Uh, this is an Eagle Industries double 556 AR mag carrier. Right now I just have an extra BRS. Or BRS. Why do I keep saying that? Um, here it is, Ruger BX25 uh, magazine here. I just have one of those in there right now. And then an extra 10 millimeter uh, Glock mag. That was 15 rounds of 10 mil. And the cool thing about this actually is that very quickly this belt comes off. Now I can use this as a combat belt where I can leave my pack where I set up and just walk around with a belt system and still have my pistol on me at all times just in case I do run into a bear or a threat. And that way I can go find a water source, fill up my water in a canteen. Oh, I'm sorry, my like Fill up my water in a canteen. Uh, bring so that when my canteen's already on there or if I'm rolling around with my BCM, uh, I have an extra two rifle mags, an extra pistol mag, an extra pair of gloves, a Gerber, and I still have a tourniquet and some form of med on there. And I still have security, so I can still just drop the pack and wear this, and it, it fits nicely. So that's one of my favorite features of the 511 Rush 100 pack. Um, again, love the pack, love the pack design. There are better packs out there. This isn't a pack recommendation video. This is a post-apocalyptic setup video weapon system loadout and show you guys the contents of my bag hope you guys like this video uh, leave a comment of things that you'd prefer or things you would do differently i read all the comments i appreciate the constructive criticism and thank you guys for being here i'll leave it on the end of advice of just make sure you guys build a dedicated pack with the mindset of going out and training instead of I'm building a bug out bag. I've done that before. I'm all oh, this is going to be my bug out bag and then I never use it and just stays in a closet in a corner forever and I never use it. Don't do that. Bugging out is not realistic anyways. Getting out and training and, and, and getting out in the great outdoors, build a pack with that mentality. Oh, I want to build a pack so I can go hike and shoot. Well, what, what, what equipment do I need? You'll come to something like this, right? So have that mindset when you come building a pack. So that way you actually get out here and, and you use it. You use the gear and you build skill and you know, you get to find out who you are deeper as a, as a person, what you're, what you're willing to accomplish, your, your, your weaks and strengths out here. Um, I have lots of weaknesses out here. <laughs> the wilderness reminds me of that every time I'm here, man. And it reminds me that I ain't nothing, basically, which is good. I like to be humbled, and I let the Lord exalt me. And that's what I'll leave you guys with. Don't ever, hum don't ever exalt yourself. Always humble yourself and let the Lord God Almighty be the one to exalt you. And, uh... Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Till next time, see you guys on the next one. God bless you all. Stay in Christ. Uh, keep his word in your heart. Follow his commands. Be a good man. Be a good woman. Protect the weak. And uh, everything else that goes along with the Bible. I can name a million things right now, but we'll end it with that. Brother Bobby, over and out.